will trust in you Welcome to this time of reflection. Welcome if you're listening and welcome if you're watching. My name's Richard and I'm one of the team who serve the church in and around Kirby Lonsdale. In one of our churches recently, I was suggesting that it feels in life as if we're offered the choice between taking one of two paths. And to help us remember the difference between the two paths, on the signposts, uh, there's a reference to a song. And so one of the paths is labelled Frank Sinatra Road and the song I Did It My Way. Uh, on the other path, the sign says Lennon and McCartney Road and the song is Help. So one path, yeah, I can do it my way and I, I will do it my way. The other path, I'm going to need some help. And when I read the Gospels, it, it seems to me as if there are times when Jesus seems to be talking to people about the choice they're going to take and which path they're going to walk down. They're right at the beginning, if you like. And then there are other times when, when Jesus is talking to people, reassuring them that they really are on the right path. Perhaps people were wondering, well, the scenery isn't quite what I expected to see, or you know, the going's much harder than I thought it was going to be. And Jesus is reassuring them because the upside down nature of God's kingdom makes it quite difficult at times. In one of the paths always seems to be bathed in sunshine. The shadow of the cross falls over the other path. I wonder if there's something like that going on in today's reading. Jesus making people think about which path they're on. And I wonder what reassures us that we're on the right path, on the path that Jesus walked. So perhaps now as we listen to the passage that Michael's going to read for us, you know, listen out, listen out for God's reassurance about the path that we're on, uh, the path that follows in the footsteps of Jesus. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6. Jesus and the twelve came down the mountainside and stood on a level place with a great crowd of the disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured and all in the crowd were trying to touch him for power came out from him and healed all of them then he looked up at his disciples and said blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the people. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you 
who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Liz and I'm one of the lay readers serving the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale. Is the passage that's just been read to us familiar to you? A more detailed version of our reading appears in Matthew chapter 5, headed The Beatitudes. However, Matthew's version contains only the blessings and not the woes and is set on a mountainside rather than on a level place. You will remember at the start of his ministry, Jesus went to the synagogue in his hometown and read the scroll from the book of Isaiah. And then he declared that he had come to preach good news to the poor, freedom for prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, and to release the oppressed. In our Luke chapter 6 text, Jesus' ministry is now gathering pace, and he is speaking to crowds from Judea, Jerusalem, and from the coastal towns of Tyre and Sidon. Not only is he speaking to them, but is healing all their diseases. However, it is to the twelve newly chosen disciples, the people who had committed themselves to following him, that he directs his talk about blessings and woes. The style would have been familiar to those who knew their scriptures, as it appears in the book of Deuteronomy, when Moses was laying out God's commandments and ways of living godly lives to the Israelites. Jesus was giving the disciples the good news of the kingdom of God. And they really needed it because they were leading pretty depressing and unjust lives under Roman occupation and the Jewish ruling classes who lorded it over them. Not only was Jesus giving them good news, but he was also trying to explain simply how God's values and priorities are often very different to those of the world. Jewish society would see you as successful if you were rich, had influence in government, and people spoke well of you. To achieve this, one might have to take advantage of other people, perhaps have servants whom you mistreated and underpaid, and to generally commune with others involved in similar exploitation. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that the kingdom of God was, is and will be a happy place where all humans are treated equally. They all have equal access to food and comfortable living conditions. However, until Jesus comes again at the end of the age, it will be up to those who follow Jesus, including us, to try to make this happen. That is to challenge the status quo and if necessary, change the current political, social and economic systems. As a result, the ruling classes will hate the disciples and today's Christians and make things very difficult for them because the rich and affluent will strongly oppose any change which disadvantages them. People who follow the way of Jesus know that they need God in their lives. Jesus then warns those who still cling to worldly selfish values 
that eventually the tables will be turned. Wealth, personal success and the accolades of humans are only temporary consolations. We are not meant to live spiritually solo. If we do not recognise our need for God, we will find that human values do not satisfy and we will never be sustainably happy. There will always be something else we want, something achingly missing, the presence of God. We can understand, although the disciples were still learning, that change can be very slow. There will still be times when we face difficulties and hardships. God understands our need. When he ascended into heaven, Jesus left his Holy Spirit to live inside us, allowing God to help us through these dark times. And we will receive his blessings. We're going to need these, particularly if we attempt to do difficult things for Jesus, which go against our human nature, like loving our enemies. To succeed with all activities for Jesus, we need the strength of the Holy Spirit within us. We also need the Holy Spirit's discernment in order to properly help people to give them what they need, not always what they want. By following the way of Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us in all our decision making, we can experience the security and love of God right here and right now. By the way, beatitude means the highest form of heavenly blessing. God gives us his grace, which is unmerited and unconditional love. The more we depend on God, the more we will learn to trust him. And unlike the best intentioned humans, God will never let us down. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His good restores my soul and I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights and I will trust in you I will not fear 
the evil one for you are with me and your rod and stuff other comfort I need to know and I will trust in you Welcome to prayers. Loving God, as we live in a world where humans' fallibility seems at times to be all we notice, help us turn our gaze back to you. Remind us to pray when we are frustrated, angry, worried or concerned at our behaviour or the behaviour of others. Love us when we aren't at our best. Give us your gift of compassion when we meet others who are also not at their best. Help us be mindful of the fragility of those we meet. Let us keep turning to you. Amen. Understanding God, we pray for all those who are feeling a bit broken. We can think of those who are bereaved suffering perhaps in mind, body or spirit, or those who feel alone. We ask that you bring them all a sense of your peace. Amen. Creator God, as we see signs of spring appearing, we thank you for the beauty of the world we live in. As we are buffeted by February winds, let us learn to see it as an opportunity to dance with you in nature. Help us find joy in those fleeting moments as glimpses of you here, present today. As we spot the white of snowdrops or cyclamen, may it be a reminder of you as the light in the darkness. Amen. Please join me as together we say, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So as we come once again to the end of our time of prayer and reflection together, thank you to everyone who has helped put this together, both on screen and the tech guys behind the scenes, and to you for watching and being with us. You make it all worthwhile. And I hope that in the week ahead, you will feel blessed. Especially if circumstances are such that you may not normally think of as feeling blessed in, that the love of God for you will enable you to feel blessed, even in difficult circumstances. And that you will be able to go out and do hard things for Jesus, like loving your enemies. Remember, you don't have to like them, um, but we are called to love our enemies as well as our friends and our neighbours. And I hope that in all of this you will know God's peace, the peace of God which passes all understanding, 
And I pray that it may keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you love, care and pray for, near and far, now and always. Amen. Your goodness will lead